Hey guys, this is my 13th update of my Aquion 54 corner tank. A uh, few changes that happened since my last video, uh, mainly the seahorse collection I had um, slowly uh, perished uh, due to something I did wrong in my tank. And I was trying to do some vodka dosing and I was supposed to put 0.2 ml in my tank and I was actually doing 2 ml in my tank and the seahorses were very sensitive unfortunately they passed and it was definitely a mistake on my part because of my phosphates were very high and vodka dosing is a good way to bring your phosphates down but it also uh, deprives the oxygen and levels in the tank and I believe the seahorses were very sensitive to it so unfortunately they did pass I uh, also uh, sold my black snowflake clownfish because the Bali aqua rich uh, clownfish as you see up there they were battling and the other clownfish was getting nipped up pretty good uh, not terrible but enough to be concerned and the sizes were so equivalent that it wasn't probably going to work out so I did uh, find someone to take care of the clownfish and uh, move on but I did get uh, a few other clownfish uh, from clownfish Inc a guy who breeds clownfish in the Florida area and uh, these actually are uh, the batch from a Bali Picasso and a nebula uh, clownfish the first one is a very very beautiful actually one these guys on the bid and the back one is a nice little one. On the one side, you see there, but if it was going the other side, it looks like the Trix Rabbit, which is pretty cool uh, design. But all three clownfish are fine right now, mainly because the uh, clownfish are immature right now, so they won't uh, be, you know, uh, fighting for each other. The bonies are still doing good. As you can see here, the male. Now, I noticed one thing. It's very hard to tell a male other than the size. But if you look at the third top dorsal fin here, the there's like a little extra appendage on this male here. I'm trying to think it's staying still. I'm like going crazy He's trying to chase him. If you could get a good look at it. There. Oh. If you could stay still. See, it, it's like a little, little extra on there. I just noticed that grew. And I, I'm assuming that's because it's the male, because I don't see it on the other one. But if you see him, if you can stay in one pitch, I don't think he likes me moving with the camera, but usually he'll float around for staying in like a little isolated for one second there. But it's really hard to see with him right now, but I guess maybe I'll get him another time. It's just it's be a little difficult right now. The tail spot blending's doing good. I also added, and you probably won't see them right now, Two Dracula gobies. One hangs underneath here because I also added a tiger pistol shrimp. And as you can see, the tunnels and dirt everywhere, I got a blue dot jawfish. He did get nipped by somebody because he was in the uh, territory. Does have a little wound on his head, but uh, he's been eating. And outside of that, it doesn't look like it got affected, so I'm going to keep a close eye on it. But uh, the reason why I held off is one of my actually one of my favorite fish is because the night the the tritus in the sand if they start digging in this area they actually will kind of suffocate themselves because of all the poison in the sand bed if it's in the area where it wasn't really turned over but since these tiger pistol shrimps have been digging pretty good in this tank they've been turning the sand for me and that way uh the health of the jawfish should be fine and he'll be doing good especially in this area because it's been underneath this rock is a big tunnel built from the uh, tiger pistol shrimp. Yasha Gobi is doing great, still looking for a female for him. And I do also have another Dracula Gobi, which probably won't see in this video because they're in their holes. Uh, put some food in the tank, you'll see them come out, but uh, it's pretty cool. Bellis Angel is doing great. The phosphates in my tank is still a 5.0, even though I'm running Phosban. It's just 
tough to get me down. I, I do have an overstock tank. I do feed a lot heavily, make sure the fish are getting a good, but that's why I keep the easier corals such as mushrooms and even the gagonians are doing very well. I got the, the, the purple one here. This one's like a gold greenish color. And this is a non-photosynthetic that's doing very well. Uh, I love this one because the color and it captures the food and floating in the water. The yellow one's doing great, as you see here, and then the white one's doing pretty good too as well. So the gagonians are doing very well. These are more of the hardier ones. I do have my pair of um, ruby red dragonettes, and the uh, mushroom's doing good. Did some rearrangement with rocks. Actually, I purchased a real reef rock, so this is man-made rock. I put a piece there, and I made a little, uh, little under cable over there. So I did some rock arrangement uh, to just switch things up for the fish. So a little aquascape in this last since the last video, and that's it. Uh, that's the main changes that I have. There's a female on the bottom, the male on the top left with the ruby reds. And uh, that's the major changes that I had. And the tank's doing very good. Let's see if I can get a nice focus for you guys. So it's a nice little community tank. The Melba bonus does show a little, not a, a little territorial towards some other fish, including the other babonius, but it's not terrible. Only when it comes to feeding time, it gets a little more aggressive, but that, I think that's expected because in the wild, you know, it's the survival of fish, so he does show a little dominance when it comes out. He doesn't mess with the clownfish. Nobody messes with the clownfish at all, but the other skinnier fish and everything like that, he'll, uh, you know, sh throw his weight around, let's put it that way. But uh, fish are doing good. Uh, also, before I forget, I did get another fish. It's called a yellow banded possum wrasse. And that's the only wrasse I could really put in my tank with the amount of fish I have. It's it's a pygmy wrasse, it's small. And, uh, and that's it. So I don't know if you can see him because he does come inside and outside of the rocks. And I don't think you might catch him in this video, but you'll see him floating around maybe in my next video. Oh, there he is. Let me get a little zoom in there. Very cool fish. Very cool. He, they usually don't come this beautiful with the, the bands on the yellow. They're very, very faded. But he was very pretty, so I had to jump on him. So, all right, guys. I hope your tank's doing well. If you have any questions, just let me know. And I'll keep you updated. Hopefully, this thing heals. He definitely, I think he got in a fight with the... Uh, Aurora Gobi because he originally was on his other side and the Aurora Gobi went after him saying you get out of my area and he obliged but It is one of my favorite fish and also my wife's one of my favorite fish if you're gonna have one of these just make sure you have a Lid on your tank because they will jump Eventually they will and they always will jump. They're known to jump So always have a tight lid with them because they'll find a little weakness in your top if you have a little opening, somehow they find their way out. So, beautiful fish, very, very personable. They pay attention to the whole tank, so a lot of personality to this fish. All right, guys, have a good one.